In this video, we're going to take a dive into math and take a look at basic sigma notation. Now, sigma notation is personally one of my favorite algebraic expressions. It's arithmetic. It's it's beautiful. I really enjoy the Greek alphabet, and it uh, uses one of the capital letters sigma, which is the big E that you see in the middle. But last year, I didn't know what sigma notation was, and I was afraid of it. But when I found out what it was, it was actually incredibly simple, and I feel like it's something that once people take a look into it, it's it's way simpler than they think. So let's break this down. So in the middle here, we have a sigma, a big sigma. That's why it's called sigma notation. Now this sigma is basically just an operator. It's just, it's just a symbol. Down here at the bottom, we have an i equals zero. And the i can honestly just be any number. It can be an a, it can be a k, it can be a theta, it can be a j. It can really be whatever it was. Up here we have a 20, and over here we have the expression 3i plus 1. I'm going to explain what all this means. So down here, this is the value that we start at with i in this expression. So right now, i would equal 0. So really, this would be equal to 3 times 0 plus 1, which 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 sorry I didn't mean to do that equals 1 so let's get rid of all of that and go back to this 20 at the top what this is saying these two are directly related to each other this is saying I goes from 0 all the way up until 20 and hits every whole number integer in between what does that mean I know it sounds confusing so what this means is it goes every everywhere from 3, 0, plus 1, plus 3, 1, plus 1, plus 3, 2, plus 1, plus all the way up until plus 3, 20, plus 1. So all this is, is this is what's being summed summation. This is also known as summation notation, sigma notation, sigma sum. Sigma sum. They both have the s, s, that s in between it. This is actually incredibly useful. So this can be mean anything. So if we have sigma i equals 0 to 5 i squared, all this means is 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Uh, let's pick a different color here really quickly. So what this means, 0 squared is 0, plus 1 squared is 1, plus 2 squared is 4, plus 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, plus 5 squared is 25. Now let's add these all together. 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 4 equals 5, 5 plus 9 equals 14, 14 plus 16 equals 30, 30 plus 25 equals 55, so all in all, this equals 55. This entire expression is just summing, adding up all of the i squareds from i equals 0 to 5. And that equals 55. And that can, this number can be anywhere from negative infinity to infinity. And those are called infinite notations, infinite sigmas. And those have a completely separate rule of themselves, which hopefully I will cover in a future video. But this also has a very close sibling to itself. Let me just get some space down here. Excuse me. So sigma notation also has a cousin, a sister more like it, called pi notation. Pi notation. Let's, let's, let's get out of here. Pi notation. Everyone knows pi, that, which is equal to 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's, that's actually not what we're talking about. That is not at all what we're talking about. Pi has two letters in the Greek alphabet. It has uppercase pi and lowercase pi. We're going to be looking at uppercase pi. Now, pi notation is exactly the same as sigma notation, but instead of summing up here, it's product. So pi is product notation. 
and the way we would write it is pi i equals zero to let's just say five and let's go i squared again so instead of being zero squared plus one squared plus two squared it would actually be zero squared times one squared times two squared times three squared times uh, four squared times five squared so this is the product of all of these pi notation brings out the product of all of that so we have sigma which equals sum and is characterized by the Greek letter sigma and then we have pi which equals product and it's characterized by the Greek letter pi which I really enjoy so these are very very base, basic sigma and pi notation you will honestly see sigma sigma notation way more than you'll see pi notation pi notation I've never seen used in my schools and I've never seen them used in textbooks they are in some textbooks where it's really just an operation that's and a function that's just not really well used it does have practical applications in the sciences like chemistry and physics but besides that you're not really gonna see it much so I wouldn't really worry too much about pi notation but sigma notation and pi notation are two very important and big concepts in algebra thank you for watching today and I hope that this video helped you understand sigma notation a little more and if you didn't know anything before I hope this video taught you if you liked it well please leave a like if you want to see more please comment and subscribe ask questions and I'll see you all later